Oh, we got to talk about this one, man. Becky Hammond and the New York Knicks. Becky, Becky Hammond coming under fire with Knicks fans uh, for this comment that she made on, on ESPN's NBA Today. Let, let's go to the soundbite and then react to it uh, afterwards. Do you think the, the Knicks are here in the Eastern Conference? Well, I certainly agree with you. They're not getting into that tier. Um, they don't have enough personnel. They don't have the manpower um, that they need to hang with those guys. Um, I think you're going to get a, a consistent team like they've been. They're a pretty good team. They're, they're well coached. They're going to be on their defensive game. But at the end of the day, they don't have a dude. You got to have a dude. You got to have a 1A dude. And they're missing that at the end of the day if, if we're just getting down to brass taxes. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't want to disagree with Becky today, but they do have that dude. Who? Jalen Brunson. No, he's too small. It, but here, here's the thing, and that's that's. <laughs> Did they say but, about you? But you know you what? Say that about you. But you're you, a Hall of you know I got a philosophy. But, Can I say my philosophy? Go ahead. If your best player is small, you're not winning. John Stockton, Allen Iverson, Steve Nash. You could go down the list. Steph, Steph Curry, Curry. <laughs> is the only guy. But he's we not all, that small. But he, but he's he, not that small. He's like six. All right, Justin. So she says he's he's too small. Now she came back in with with a with a statement, not necessarily walking it back, but wanted to clarify her statement. What what did you make of it? The whole thing. Well, I think it's pathetic that we have an opinion and we need to walk it back just yeah, because of some like criticism. That. You stay yeah. like one thing you do as a as a broadcaster or somebody that's going to analyze something. If you say something, you got to stick by it because. If we're going to walk back things, then am I going to take you seriously in the future when you say something? Or am I going to say, well, you're going to back off it a little bit if somebody gives you some criticism. So I didn't think it was necessary for her to walk it back. It's an opinion. I have a bunch of opinions that people don't like. I'm sure that you have opinions that people don't like, uh, but it, it's what I mean. And then secondly, uh, I want to be careful how I word this because... Uh, and CP, I think you know this from listening, and maybe Alex, you do as well. Uh, Eddie and I have a, a long-running debate, okay? Jalen Brunson against Julius Randle. They're both fantastic players. In fact, I voted for Julius Randle for an all-NBA team last year, of which he made. And he, I, I think I've done it twice now uh, since I've had a vote on these official awards. So I like Julius Randle, okay? But I like Jalen Brunson better. So I stand in the Brunson corner. Eddie stands in the Randall corner as to who the best player in this team is. I'll also say this about uh, Jalen Brunson. I think he's a better player than Donovan Mitchell. I'd rather have him than Donovan Mitchell. He's kicked Donovan Mitchell's butt twice in the postseason, once when he was in Dallas, this past year in New York. Uh, when when he was in Cleveland was, was Donovan Mitchell. So I'm a big Jalen Brunson fan. Uh, but is she correct? She's 100% correct. You can't win a championship when you have an undersized player as your best player. I think he's the best player. I don't think it's Randall. So I think that's an issue. And she's also correct in the NBA history. I mean, name me two other guys or name me one other guy outside of, uh, you know, Isaiah Thomas yeah. as an undersized guard and uh, Steph Curry. You can't in the history of the sport. Maybe yeah. we could say Walt Frazier. I mean, so another Nick is a point guard who is the best player in a championship team. Uh, you can't say it about, you know, Kuzi didn't do it. Kuzi, you know, didn't win until you got uh, Russell who came aboard. And Russell was the best player on that team. Oscar didn't do it. Uh, Oscar goes teams up with Kareem. Uh, and then that was it. I mean, Magic did it as a point guard, but Magic was not undersized. Magic six foot nine. Uh, so like undersized point guard, best player, history of the sport. Really, there's there's two. It's Steph, it's Isaiah. You want to argue Walt? I'm not going to have an issue with that. But that's the list right there. So Brunson's yeah. a fantastic player. Brunson, I think, can be your second best player. Brunson's a guy that I think is a draw for guys to play in New York. People should want to play with him. But Brunson's not the best player in a championship team. I mean, you guys are really invested in this Knicks team. I'd yeah. be interested to hear your take. And if you think I said anything wrong, if you think yeah. Becky did. He, he's he's not he he's not the 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 one a guy and that's that's why you know there's always Knicks trade rumors who's going to be the guy that they're going to get can they go get Giannis can they get Embiid you know is Zion going to burn the bridge in the Pelicans and all of a sudden turn into the savior like they're still looking for that upgrade to take them there uh Brunson is a very good player I think he's borderline superstar at this moment and a guy that plays big in big games I mean just look at him last year in the playoffs against two of the top defenses yeah. in the East he was the the only guy that could really solve outside of Jokic winning the championship. The only guy that could solve that Miami Heat defense 
with no problem was Jalen Brunson. So he can certainly raise his level of play, but she does have a point in, in that you, you look at the history of the game, Giannis, Jokic, LeBron James. I mean, it, it's a big man, still dominated game in terms of winning those championships. And, you know, I, I think for the, for Knicks fans, the, the walk back by her, I think, was two things. Number one, I think Knicks fans probably, uh, you know, didn't send her some Merry Christmas wishes in her DMs. You know, when you no. insult the Knicks fans, they, they get very angry. And then number two, maybe because, you know, as a coach, it's kind of hard to kind of toe that line between media and coach. And maybe she felt like, you know, it was a little bombastic. Yeah. And she walked it back a little bit. Here's what I'll say about this is I've worked with a lot of coaches, a lot that want to get back into the game. And uh, the ones that have bit their lip and not spoken their mind, it's odd. They never get back in. And mm -hmm. then I've talked to guys like Sam Mitchell. Sam Mitchell, he'll say Sam, whatever. The, and you've worked yeah. with Sam. Yeah. Sam says whatever the hell he wants. And guess what? Sam has the, you know gone back and worked as a head coach after yeah. speaking his mind. Lionel Hollins, the same thing. Lionel Hollins never bit his tongue. Lionel Hollins went back and coached uh, with the Nets after he was on the air with me. And then you have some people that are afraid to say, you got to say your opinion. And I think people respect that and you stand by it. And I've always found that, uh, you know, if I speak my mind and I explain it, and especially if I then later maybe see the person publicly, I'll go up and I'll say, this is why I said what I said. Uh, you know, and again, like I've said a ton of things where I get blowback from maybe even the individual. I've received it from the person I'm criticizing and I still stand by what I've said. And certainly you're going to get it from fans. I mean, check out your Twitter mentions after you yeah. say anything that is semi-controversial. But if you believe it, you believe it, you stand by it. And then off we go. I think my issue with the whole Becky Hammond conversation about the Knicks, you know, one a guy and all this other type of stuff. It's like, like, okay, we can talk about one A's and one B's and all that type of stuff. But I think Jalen Brunson is a one B. I think he could be, I think he's that level of player on, on the Knicks team. Do you need a big that is more complimentary to him? Like someone like a Joel Embiid? Sure. But why is the conversation about what, what Jalen Brunson is and what we need? It's like, couldn't you have the same conversation the other way? Like, Shaq didn't win without Kobe, so you need a guard to help there. Like you talk about having good defensive play from Drew Holiday and somebody that can organize the offense to help Giannis enter the Kumpo. Like we can keep going back and forth saying, hey, you also need the guard to go with the big to go do some work as well. Like, you know, we go look at the two wings out in Boston, Tatum and Brown, and they're still needing somebody else. Like that's why they went out to go get Drew Holiday. That's why they got Chris Porzingis to go help supplement them so that way they yes. can have a full-on roster. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a team sport. So I, I just find it weird that, we have to look at like, you know, it's, it's, I get it. And I agree with the fact that yes, the big man is going to be the better player. It has to be the better player just because it gets easier looks can over can see, can get a better shot advantage over players. I totally get that. But at the end of the day, like we, I feel like we also exclude that that big man, that wing also needs really good and competent point guard play. And for a team like the Knicks that hasn't had good competent point guard play in a long time, like, I, I just feel like it's just, it's a little much. It's a little much from Becky, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, you, you everybody needs, like, an additional player, right? So it's like Shaq's not winning without Kobe. I mean, you could go yeah. through the, the list in NBA history. I mean, Giannis isn't winning without Chris Middleton. Uh, you're not getting, like, very few people have won without that high, high, high level number two. I mean, Akeem Elijah won there in 94. We could, we could even go Drexler. to LeBron James. LeBron James, like no, you need LeBron, Dwayne Wade I mean, down Miami, look, you need Kyrie Irving too. Exactly. Dwayne yeah. Wade, Anthony Davis, Kyrie Irving. I mean, so like they need, like, again, the list is maybe Walton in 77 didn't need that, uh, that superstar number two, maybe Barry in 75, uh, Elijah Wan in 94, Duncan, there was a little window there at the end of the, the David Robinson era and before Mono and Parker really came onto the scene where he kind of did it. But otherwise, yeah, you needed a, a second superstar. I mean, Magic never won without Kareem. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the, this, the team has deficiencies. You know, Brunson's is playing very well. Julius is playing very well. They just lost their big man in Mitchell Robinson. Their shooting is still a little, can be a little bit questionable. So they have a lot of holes to fill. I think the second part of the argument, which caught the ire of Knicks fans, is that when you think about the, the conversation about the Knicks on the mainstream, whether it's TNT, it's ESPN, it's the same conversation, right? Like when they, when the, the, the talk is about the Knicks, it's, well, they can't win a championship, right? We talk about Indiana, you talk about OKC, it's, oh, they're promising, they're exciting, they're this, they're that. But when it's the Knicks, it's, 
they can't get that guy or this guy's not that guy. So Knicks fans tune it out. And I think if you look at the 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 reactions on Twitter, it was a lot of that. There were a lot of Knicks fans is just like, listen, we we hear the same thing over and over again. We know we need that guy. And they just want to see the team being talked about, I guess, in a different lens. What do you think? I mean, unfortunately, that's the league as a whole, right? Where it's like, oh, well, this team needs that. Or like, we're, at least you're on the receiving end of guys should want to go there. I mean, how do you think they feel in a place like Cleveland where it's like, all yeah. right, well, Donovan Mitchell should want to leave or Giannis should want to leave Milwaukee or yeah, this Milwaukee. guy should want to leave this market or that market. Like, at least you're one of the few teams that the media is trying to direct players to go to. Think about how bad it is if you're doing a show in Milwaukee and nonstop, all you hear is, oh, Giannis should want to leave. If you're in Portland and it's like, oh, Damian Lillard should want to leave, uh, mm -hmm. like the media tends to try and siphon people to at least, uh, you know, the New York market, the L.A. market, the Miami market. Uh, so uh, that at least you should feel as a, as a Nick fan, you should feel happy with. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's like we we get it like we know, like the Knicks need that star. But can we add a little bit more nuance to what where the Knicks have been over the last couple of years and where we're at now and just enjoy the moment of having a competitive team? Shout out to my guy, Mark Schindler, who wrote an awesome article today. Wow. He talked about both the Knicks and the Kings being in the same position where, you know, two two franchises that have just been god awful for so long. We're talking about Kings that had until last season, a 16 year playoff drought. Knicks outside of a nice Carmelo Anthony, like three years where we went to the playoffs for the past tw two decades. It's just been god awful basketball play. And so now the fact that both these teams are in a stable situation, it's like, can we have a little bit more nuance to appreciate, hey, at least they're competitive right now. They're moving in the right direction. We know that every team needs a star. Every team needs someone like Giannis and B to go compete. We get that. Yeah. That's not that's not that's not new. That is not new to us. So it's like now it's like it's gone from, oh, this team stinks to now we need a star. What happened to the middle part? Can we get something in the yeah. middle of like saying, hey, can we actually have a nice discourse about, hey, Brunson was a really good signing. Can we talk about how that was a steal from the Mag Magic? Can we talk about how Julius Randle was a good free agent signing? And you know what? For a guy that was seemed to be a role player coming from New Orleans, he's elevated his play to another level. Just let's have some of that conversation then. We need a superstar. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And I think like the part that maybe you, you should be happy about and you can focus on is that you're being run the right way and you're being run methodically. Like, for example, I think out in Utah, okay, Utah stinks. But at least you know that they're being run by a really smart guy. Danny Ainge has proved it before. So you can have the optimism about the future. And I think with the way that the Knicks have handled things the last couple of years, at least it's like, like, I think it'd be better off for you to be where you are right now and maybe a little worse than be a little bit better, but not really have faith in the way that you're being run. Right. And that, Hey, the team is just looking for a quick fix or, uh, you know, they're just trying to make the postseason. To me, it, it appears that, Leon Rose is running the organization into like, yeah, could I make a move right now that'll maybe get us to the uh, to the second round or maybe get us to the conference finals, but will be an easy loss to like Milwaukee or Philadelphia or, or Boston? Like, yeah, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wait to make a move that's going to put us in championship contention. So like as long as I feel like I have confidence in the way that an organization is being run, uh, then I, I think that's a positive that you can focus on.